Hi, <coughs> Peter Hudson, Head of Training and Recruitment with the World Golf Teaching Federation, founder of YJ and operator of the uh, Free Lessons for Life program. And before we start this level one training, I want to give you some sort of clue about what an outstanding golf coach would look like and what skills and knowledge do they have to have. Certainly, the most important aspect of the coach is the client because the client is by far the biggest resource that we have for getting them what they want. And first of all, we need to really define what it is that they want. We need to know that precisely and accurately so we've got a really good solid picture and understanding of what it is they want and why they want it. And we need to know that because we need to know whether that's congruent with their desires, their motivation, the amount of time, money and resources they have. And quite often on this voyage of discovery, which is also a voyage of discovery for the client themselves, we discover that some of the, the, some of the tools in the toolbox, the desire, motivation, time, money and resources, isn't enough. And, it, and if that's never going to be enough, then we need to go back from there and define their outcome into something that can be achieved. Now, I don't want to have any misapprehensions about what can be achieved. It's certainly uh, my well-founded opinion that anybody could play at scratch and that anybody that's already playing at scratch can play on tour. It, it's just about finding out their, their potential. So Tim Galway calls it uh, potential for, uh, performance is talent plus skills minus interference. And a lot of what we do is about where we're working in that equation. We need to have a lot of questioning skills, skills a lot of listening skills, a lot of language skills, uh, 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 an understanding of beliefs and attitudes and behaviours that will help us in the first place decide what the specific goal is. Now, there may be different ways of achieving the goal and it really comes into two main categories and probably one of those categories has been ignored hugely. And that category is the on-course category. So where the goal is based on a target, a handicap, um, a, a, a specific victory, then it's more likely that we can affect the opportunities to get that goal on the golf course because we've forgotten that that's where the game of golf is played and certainly we need to put our resources into that direction first and also it's easier and more effective to put our resources into that place. Then these would be like how we prepare to go and play, what clubs we've got, what balls we're playing with, even a bag plan, what the weather's going to be like on the day, what's the basic course design, is it tight, long, up and down, side to side, what are the speeds of the green, have we had a practice round, and then maybe just before the round, what's our warm up going to be, what is the best way we can warm up, and then we've got those slightly distance things like you know our mental strength our suppleness our fitness how can we affect those for the better if necessary now how are we going to manage our state on the golf course we've all had rounds of golf where we seem to be in what some people call the zone but that zone is just us in the right most effective state We've seen golfers on the golf course losing their state. We've seen them not able to tap into what are their natural abilities to succeed, not get into flow. So we need to be able to have the skills to help people understand their state, manage their state, work out what specific states are useful and when, and then get them fixed and in place. Course management is an incredible skill built on playing with strategies. Sometimes those strategies will mean that we play within ourselves, within our capabilities. 
We can decide on our strategies. Our strategies don't always have to be play safe. They can be risk and reward. But to understand that they're risk and reward and not then get frustrated by outcomes that we had, uh, that we didn't get that we'd hoped for. There are so many great strategies that you can bring into your game that take away from your ability to have to make an on-course decision because you've already got a tried and trusted way to go forward. But on those occasions where we have to make decisions, how are we making those decisions and how could we make better decisions? We need to understand the importance of our pre-shot routine and how our pre-shot routine is just a process and a, and a routine to get you to the place where you just allow yourself to play golf. And then post-shot routine, how are we going to take our learnings from the actual shot and either accept ourselves for where we are at this current moment in time or learn from them? Now that is just one side of this equation. The other side is everything that we can do off course. So basically all of our golf techniques from putting, chipping, pitching, irons, drivers, woods, shot shape, and we know that there's a colossal amount of information here and we have to try and unravel that. So we're going to give you within that some skills that will allow you to unravel that but give you support for any and every swing. But understand this, it is only the club head and club face that decides where that ball will go. Now as we take on this idea of maybe changing a technique, we need to help the client understand how to learn how blueprints of what they do and how they do it cause and effect. Most specifically awareness, how can we allow them to become aware in such a way that they can understand what they're presently doing and whether that has any bearing on what they're trying to do. We need to get great at delivering feedback and great at helping them to understand how feedback can help them towards their goal. We need to help them explore different things, different ideas without getting paranoid or defensive or egotistic about what it is that they're trying to do or not do. Once we get them doing what they want to do and it's working, then we need a way to build up that repetition so that it be can become automatic. In short, we need to manage this whole process from start to finish. We maybe need to discover all of the modern day equipment that can measure that from force weight platforms, um, uh, uh, all of the ball analysis, the body analysis, all of the teaching aids that help us understand all of these things. Maybe TrackMan is one of those things that you want to become an expert at. Now also, we have to, we have to understand that this game is done at many levels. Beginner, improver, expert young, average age, senior, club golfer, they, they may be preparing people for tour, maybe just game improvement, we have male, female, there's just this whole vast area of which to go to and it would make sense to pick one specific and become an expert in that particular field. Because by becoming an expert in that field, you become better than everybody else is out there. And then your ability to market yourself effectively, to tell people exactly what you do, how you do it, and guarantee their success. And, and be able to tell the world that you can do that in a way that people come to you easily and freely. Please, if you want to become an outstanding golf coach, understand you're going to need all of these skills and a lot more and it's going to take a little while to attain them. If you're ready to start that journey, then call me to discover your first move. Thank you for listening.